Hello everyone, you are welcome to how to solve this very nice algebra equation x cubed minus y cubed is equal to x minus y whole squared. Our job is to find all possible values of x and y such that x and y are integers. So let's start. This x cubed minus y cubed can be factorized as x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared. And we move this expression to the left hand side. This will become negative x minus y whole squared is equal to 0. Now we can factor out this x minus y. So x minus y as common factor and uh, in bracket left, uh, in bracket left, uh, x squared plus uh, x y plus uh, y squared minus x minus y is equal to 0. Next, x minus y times, uh, we open this bracket, so this will become x squared plus uh, x times y plus uh, y squared negative times x and negative x and negative times negative y plus y is equal to 0. From here either this expression x minus y is equal to 0 or this expression x squared plus uh, x y plus uh, y squared minus x plus uh, y is equal to 0. From this equation, if we move this uh, negative y to the right hand side, this implies that uh, x is equal to y. And if uh, in this uh, original equation we replace every y with x, then this will become x cubed minus x cubed is equal to x minus x whole squared. So this left hand side will be equal to 0 and this uh, right hand side will be equal to 0. It means that uh, this is true for all integers. This is true for all integers. So from this case uh, we get the solution x comma y is equal to n comma n where n is any integer. So this is a solution from case 1. Now we consider this uh, second case. From this case uh, we rearrange these terms. Uh, we write x squared first then plus uh, xy, then we move this negative x here, negative x, plus uh, this uh, y squared, plus uh, this y is equal to 0. Next, x squared. From these two terms, uh, we can factor out x. So, in bracket left, uh, plus uh, y minus 1 times x plus this y squared plus y is equal to 0. Now this is a quadratic equation in terms of x and this equation can only have integer solutions if discriminant is a perfect square. So the discriminant of this equation b squared minus 4ac must be equal to perfect square let's say k squared. Now in this equation b is y minus 1. So this will become y minus 1 whole squared minus 
4 times a is 1 times c is y squared plus y and this is equal to k squared. Now, this y minus 1 whole squared is equal to y squared minus 2y plus 1. Negative 4 times y squared will become negative 4y squared. Negative 4 times y minus 4y is equal to k squared. Now, this uh, y squared minus 4y squared will become negative 3y squared. Negative 2y minus 4y will become negative 6y plus this 1 is equal to k squared. Now, from these two terms, uh, we can factor out negative 3 negative 3 as common factor in bracket left uh, y squared plus uh, 2y plus 1 is equal to k squared. Next, negative 3 times uh, y squared plus uh, 2y. To make this a perfect square, we add here 1 and to balance this, uh, we must subtract 1 plus uh, this 1 is equal to k squared. Now, this expression y squared plus uh, 2y plus 1 is a perfect square. So, this will become negative 3 times y plus 1 whole squared minus 1 plus uh, this 1 is equal to k squared. Now, we distribute this negative 3, this will become negative 3 times y plus 1 whole squared. Negative 3 times negative 1 will become plus 3 plus this 1 is equal to k squared. Now, this 3 plus 1 will become 4 minus this 3 times uh, y plus 1 whole squared is equal to k squared and square of a number is always greater than or equal to 0. So, this uh, k squared is greater than or equal to 0. So, this expression at the left hand side uh, must be greater than or equal to 0. You can write the inequality 4 minus 3 times y plus 1 whole squared must be greater than or equal to 0. And move this uh, negative expression to the right hand side, this will become 4 is greater than or equal to 3 times y plus 1 whole squared. And if we divide both sides by 3, this implies that uh, 4 over 3 is uh, greater than or equal to y plus 1 whole squared. This can also be written as uh, y plus 1 whole squared is less than or equal to 4 over 3. Now, this uh, y plus 1 whole squared is always greater than or equal to 0. It means that uh, y plus 1 whole squared is uh, in the range of uh, 0 to 4 over 3 because uh, x and y are integers. So, there are only two integers between 0 and 4 over 3, 0 and 1. So, this expression y plus 1 whole squared can only be equal to 0 or 1. y plus 1 whole squared is equal to 0 and the y plus 1 whole squared is equal to 1. From this equation, if we square both sides of this equation, this implies that uh, y plus 1 is equal to 0 and the uh, y is equal to negative 1. And if we square both sides of this equation, this implies that 
y plus 1 is equal to plus minus 1. It means that uh, y plus 1 is equal to 1 and uh, y plus 1 is equal to negative 1. From this equation we get the value of y is equal to 0 and from this equation we get the value of y is equal to negative 2. And this is third value of y is equal to negative 1. Now to find the values of x we recall the equation. We recall this equation x squared plus y minus 1 times x plus y squared plus y is equal to 0. We recall the equation x squared plus uh, y minus 1 times x plus uh, y squared plus uh, y is equal to 0. When y is equal to negative 1 then this will become x squared plus uh, negative 1 minus 1 times x plus uh, negative 1 squared plus uh, negative 1 is equal to 0. Next x squared. This negative 1 minus 1 will become negative 2 times x. And this uh, negative 1 squared is uh, plus 1 and plus minus will become minus 1 is equal to 0. And this negative 1 will be considered out with this positive 1 and we are left with uh, x squared minus 2x is equal to 0. We can factor out x in bracket left x minus 2 is equal to 0. Either x is equal to 0 or this x minus 2 is equal to 0. From here we get x is equal to 2. So when y is equal to negative 1 then x will be equal to 0 or x will be equal to 2. So from here we get uh, two pairs x comma y is equal to 0 comma negative 1 and the second pair is 0 comma 2. Now when y is equal to 0 then this equation will become x squared plus uh, 0 minus 1 times x plus uh, 0 squared plus uh, 0 is equal to 0. This will become x squared. 0 minus 1 is negative times x is equal to 0. We can factor out x in bracket left x minus 1 is equal to 0. Either x is equal to 0 or this x minus 1 is equal to 0. From here we get x is equal to 1. So when y is equal to 0 then x will be equal to 0 and x will be equal to 1. So from here we get the other two pairs 0 comma 0 and 1 comma 0. Now when y is equal to negative 2 then this equation will become x squared plus negative 2 minus 1 times x plus negative 2 squared plus negative 2 is equal to 0. And this will become x squared negative 2 minus 1 will become negative 3 times x negative 2 squared is uh, plus uh, 4 plus minus will become negative 2 is equal to 0 and x squared minus 3x uh, 4 minus 2 plus 2 is equal to 0 and this can be factorized as uh, x squared minus x minus 2x plus 2 is equal to 0 and x as common factor in bracket left x minus 1 minus 2 as common in bracket left x minus 1 is equal to 0. 
and this x minus 1 is common x minus 1 as common factor in bracket left x minus 2 is equal to 0 and from here we get x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2. So, when y is equal to negative 2 then x will be equal to 1 and x will be equal to 2. So, from here we get other two pairs 1 comma negative 2 and 2 comma negative 2. So, from the second case we get these 6 pairs and from case 1 from case 1 we get that x comma y is equal to n comma n for any integer n n is a member of integers 